So, today I am going to discuss uh, about that whatever we have done in the previous lecture we have shown that the dimension of u plus w is equal to dimension of u plus dimension of v minus dimension of u intersection w not v it is w where u and w are the subspaces of a vector space v and v is a finite dimension. So, suppose I take the dimension uh, or maybe I can say that v is a finite dimensional finite dimensional vector space. Now, from here I can say that if u intersection w is 0, just it contains the 0 element. From here we can say then I can write that the dimension of u direct sum it will become the direct sum then it will be equal to the dimension of u plus dimension of w. So, for the direct sum we directly can write as dimension of u plus w is equal to dimension of u plus dimension of w. So, these things we can uh, write down for example, suppose I take the vector space v I take r 3. So, dimension of v is 3. So, let we take the subspace u. So, I just take the subspace and I take the subspace <coughs> u as x y 0. So, all the element. So, I can say that this is a x y plane. I can take the another subspace w that is 0 y z. So, I can say that the elements coming from y and z space. So, this is I just write y z belongs to real line and it is basically y z plane. I, in fact, I can also write here that that x and y belongs to real line and that is equal to x y plane. And this is maybe I can write y z plane. Now, from here you can see that in this case if I take u intersection w. So, it will contain all the elements which has element coming from u. So, u is if it is u coming from u then it will contain the third coordinate 0 and if it is coming to w the first coordinate 0. So, it means if you take the u intersection w that will contain only all the elements that which has 0 y 0 where y belongs to real line. So, basically it is equal to a y axis. So, it contains all the elements lying on the y axis and we also know that the dimension of u is 2 dimension of w is also 2 and dimension of u intersection w is just the one line. So, it is 1. So, that is a just y axis. So, from here you can see that the dimension of u is 2, 2 and 1. So, now from here I can write directly that the dimension of u plus w will be 2 plus 2 minus 1. So, that will be 3 and from here it says that since the dimension of u plus w is equal to the dimension of v which implies that u plus w is itself r cube and that is also true in this case because I am taking all the elements from x y plane and from y z plane. 
So, u plus w will contain all the bases of it because it is spanned by we know that that u plus w is spanned by by basis of or maybe I can write down of u and w. So, if I take the set S <coughs> that is spanning set for u and spanning set of w. So, I just take the span of this one. So, it becomes u plus w that we already know. So, from here I say that u plus w becomes in fact the whole vector space v. Now, <coughs> if we take w or maybe if we take another subspace S that is contain only z axis, then if I take u plus so u intersection S. So, then you from here you can see that u is just x y plane and S is a z axis. So, it will contain only 0 element and from here I can say that the dimension of u intersection S will be 0 because it will contain only one element that is a 0 element. So, from here I can say that the dimension of u plus S is equal to 2 plus 1 that is equal to 3 because the dimension of S is just 1. So, from here I can write that this will be a direct sum. So, this one way we can find out the dimension of a direct sum or it is not the direct sum then we can use this theorem. So, after this one we define the another terminology and that is called coordinates of a vector. So, let us define this one. Let I take a set B, it is V1, V2 up to Vn, B A an ordered set from vector space V. So, it is ordered set means we cannot change the order. If it is a V1, then it will be V1, V2, whatever the order is there, the element or the vector will lying in the same order. So, if it is a ordered set from the vector space V, then a vector V from capital V can be can be written as. So, now take V. So, it is ordered set from the vector space V then a vector V. <coughs> so, it is not the ordered set I can say it is the ordered basis from vector space V then any vector V from can be written as some alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 plus alpha n v n. So, now I have written the linear combination then 
then the vector that is alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n is called the coordinates is, is called the coordinate of of a vector of vector v belongs to v with respect to basis b so from here i can write that i can write like this one so this one alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n it can be written as uh, this coordinates of v related to the basis b so this is represented like this one now so this is the way we can define now if the coordinates if the coordinates of a vector are related to standard basis then it is called coordinates of a vector because here it is coordinates of the vector v with respect to the basis b but if we take the coordinates of the vector related to the standard basis then they are just called the coordinates of the vector for example suppose i take the vector 2 3 4 minus 1 and that belongs to r4 now we know that the standard basis for r4 so this is just 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 0 1 so these are called the standard basis and we represent by e1 e2 e3 and e4 so these are the called the standard basis now from here i can write that 2 3 4 minus 1 it can be written directly as 2 e1 plus 3 e2 plus 4 e3 minus 1 e4 and so i am writing a vector v as a linear combination of the basis standard basis of r4 so from here you can check that my alpha 1 is 2 alpha 2 is 3 alpha 3 is 4 and alpha 4 is minus 1 and which is same as the coordinates of this vector uh, 2 3 4 minus 1 so from here i can say that the set 2 3 4 minus 1 so this is the coordinates the coordinates of the vector 2 3 4 minus 1 so this one i can write even because this vector belongs to r4 so this is the vector and its coordinates are this one okay so from here i can say or maybe i can say that so is the coordinate or the vector this so so i am writing like this one it means i am talking about the standard basis
So, it is a coordinate means the whole vector we are taking, we are talking about the whole vector this one. and the element of these are the coordinates. Now, from here let us take the another example, the question is that find coordinates of 2, 3, 4, minus 1 relative to the to the ordered basis. So, here I am taking the basis. So, basis is 1 1 0 0 and then 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 1 and 1 0 0 0. So, these are the basis I am taking and we are talking about, so this vector v is basically 2, 3, 4, minus 1 is the same. So, it belongs to R4 that we already know. So, it is a basis of this one. So, it means that these vectors are linear independent and it spans the whole R4. So, that is the basis. Now, I need to write out, find out the coordinates of this one related to the ordered basis. Now, so for this one, we need to write, so to find the coordinates, we need to write the vector 2, 3, 4, minus 1 as a linear combination. So, suppose I take here alpha 1, 1, 0, 0 plus beta 0, 1, 1, 0 gamma and delta, where this alpha, beta, gamma, delta they are belongs to the scalar field. So, these are the coming from the field basically, these are the scalar and coming from the field. So, I am taking this as a real numbers here. Now, we need to find this alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So, because these are the coordinates of this vector related to the basis B. So, from here if you see it is a just linear combination. So, if I put a matrix and this vector as a column 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 and 1, 0, 0, 0. And if I put here as alpha, beta, gamma, delta, this should be equal to 2, 3, 4, minus 1. So, it is a 4 cross 4 system. Now, in fact, here we cannot change the order. So, order means this is my first, second, third, fourth, because if I change the order, then this value of alpha, beta, gamma will also change. So, we cannot change the order because we know that if we uh, swap some columns of the given matrix, then the result will be changed. So, now from here I will get this. So, this one we need to solve. So, it is a 4 by 4 system. So, you can check that this is equal to A x is equal to B and we need to find the solution for this one. So, the best thing uh, for this one is to uh, reduce this into the acolyn form and then find the solution. So, for this one I will write the augmented matrix So, the augmented matrix I can write directly. So, this will my augmented matrix. So, I can write from here. So, it will be 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 1 
0 and this one I will write as 2 3 4 minus 1. Now, from here I will write minus r 1 plus r 2 because I want need to make this element 0. So, it will be 1 2. So, minus 1 plus 1 it will be 0. So, it will be 1 0 and minus 1. So, it will be minus 1 and minus 2 plus 3 it will be 1 and all other element will be same 0 1 0 minus 1. So, from here I get this matrix. Now, I need so this is my pivot element this is also pivot. So, I need to make this element 0. So, from here I will write minus r 2 plus r 3. So, it will be 1 2 and then 0 1 0 minus 1 1 0. So, I am minus 2 uh, minus r 2 plus r 3. So, it, this will be 0. So, this will be 1 and minus minus 1. So, it will be 1 and minus 1 plus 4. So, it will be 3 and then this will be minus 1. So, I get this value. <coughs> now, from here you just check it is my p weight, this is a p weight, this is a p weight. So, the last one I can apply minus r 3 over r 4 and ultimately I will get 1 0 1 0 minus 1 1 0 0 1 1 3. So, it will be minus 1 plus 1 0 minus 1 and here it will be minus 1 and minus 3 plus minus 1 minus 4. Now, it is a echelon form and because it is a 4 cross 4 matrix. So, now from here, so this is my equal to u the row echelon form. So, from here I can directly I can write that <coughs> So, I can write from here minus delta is equal to minus 4. So, that gives you delta is equal to 4 from the last equation because we have to do the back substitution and from here I can write gamma plus delta is equal to 3. So, that gives you gamma is equal to 3 minus delta. So, 3 minus 4 that is minus 1. So, gamma is coming minus 1. Now, from the second last equation or the second equation, it will be beta minus delta is equal to 1. So, that gives you beta is equal to 1 plus delta. So, it is 1 plus delta is 4. So, that is equal to 5. And from the first equation, it is alpha minus delta is equal to 2. So, that gives me alpha is equal to 2 plus delta. So, it is 2 plus 4 that is equal to 6. <coughs> so, it is delta is coming 4, gamma is coming minus 1 beta is coming 5 and delta is it is plus I think is equal to 2. So, now from here I can add alpha is equal to 2 minus delta. So, it is 2 minus 4 it is minus 2. So, now from here all this we can from here I can write that the my coordinates so, this is the coordinates 
minus 2 5 minus 1 4. So, now we can write that this is the coordinates of vector. So, the vector we have started with it is 2 3 4 2 3 4 minus 1 with respect to the basis B. So, this one I can write. So, these are the coordinates of this vector with respect to the basis B. So, that is minus 2 5 minus 1 4. So, this is the way we can find out the coordinates of any vector related to the given basis. So, that is one of the way we can define the basis. Now, so based on this one, I want to discuss one more important that how we can use the extension theorem to extend the basis. So, for this one I just want to do one important example. So, let suppose we have vector space P 3 x. So, that is set of all polynomials of degree less than equal to 3 and suppose x belongs to some interval i. So, so I take the vector space V as P 3 x and also I know that the dimension of V will be 4 because it is a polynomial of degree less than equal to 3. So, it is dimension is 4 we know that. Now, let we have two subspaces of V. So, I take the first subspace U as I just take the subspaces u and I am taking all the polynomial p belongs to v such that p of 1 become 0. Means, I am taking all the polynomial from this vector space v such that 1 is the root of that polynomial and I take the another subspace w that is p all the polynomials from v such that p dash 1 is 0. Now, the question is check u plus w u intersection w u w in terms of dimension basis and the extension of each of these basis. So, each of these basis means the basis of u plus w, u intersection w, u and w basis to the basis of V, the basis of V. <coughs> that means, so to the basis of V. So, means first I to need to find out what are the basis of u plus w and u intersection w, u and w and then we have to write its dimension and then we should be able to extend this basis to the basis of v. So, that is the question.
so we know that we know that dimension of v is 4 because it is v is basically all the polynomial of type uh, a plus b x plus c x square plus d x q such that a b c d are real. So, it is space of all these polynomials and we also know that that the standard basis for V is 1 x x square and x cube. So, this is the standard basis for the set of polynomial of degree less than or equal to 3 and to the 4 number. So, we know that its dimension will be 4. So, we will continue. So, let me stop here. So, in this question we need to find out that how we can find out the dimension the basis for different different subspaces and we will continue this example in the next lecture. So, thanks for watching, thanks very much.